Welcome back. This is my latest leather sculpture and I have continued to make the three-dimensional sculptures. If you've seen my other videos you'll know that I normally do leather sculptures that hang on the wall and are relief. This one is in three dimensions which I will show you in a minute. If you've never been here before and you're looking at this going what the hell is that? This is a leather sculpture. I took a piece of wet leather, pinned it to a clay mold that I made, let it dry, painted it, and stuck it to some other materials. And here you have the final image. So, normally, <laughs> if you were to view a piece of artwork in a gallery, this would be on a nice white professional looking pedestal, but I am shooting this gorilla style in my living room. So here we go. I decided not to title this one because I think this one kind of speaks for itself. And sometimes I don't title a piece of work because I want the viewer to have that experience. You can take meaning from it. It doesn't always... Although everything I do has generally something to do with me, art is very subjective and every person that's going to look at this is going to see something different. And sometimes I just like the, the work sorry, to speak for itself. I just showed you my gargoyles on the floor. That's funny. I just like the work to speak for itself and... I don't always feel like I have to inform the viewer of what it means or what it is. I just want you to make up your own mind. So I decided to go with this antique bronze look because this, let me show you, this leather is like very soft and very thin. This whole piece probably weighs less than five pounds, but... I chose this painting technique to make it look as if it's metal and heavy and old and give it gravity and weight because I thought that was an interesting contrast and interesting juxtaposition. So I also really enjoy this bronzing technique. It's just a painting technique I came up with by experimenting with what colors look like on top of each other, you know, start with something dark, go lighter, see what happens, and then it turns to metal. Is that an alchemist thing? Can you turn leather into metal? No, that's lead into gold. Never mind. Back to art. So I'm really, really enjoying making the three-dimensional sculptures because I, as a creative person, I need to be constantly improving, evolving, changing what I do because I, I enjoy making art, but if I just keep making the same thing over and over, it to me it gets a little stale and it's not it's just not as fun. So I'm always looking to improve and change and evolve and grow and and this has really been a turning point for me. I'm pushing the materials in a way I haven't before. And I'm seeing what are the possibilities? What else can I do with this? And I am really enjoying just the whole process and the challenge. And where can I push this? And how can I, how can I make this better, more interesting, bring it to life? I, I love a good challenge, and I, I don't like it when things stay the same. I need to change things up, you know, so I don't, so I don't get bored. I have moved more times than I care to admit, and it's funny because I don't enjoy moving, but I had a hard time, like, finding a place that I wanted to be and to be honest, I'm still not in a place I want to be. I still want to move again. And I especially want to change cities and go somewhere a little more vibrant and colorful. And uh, I'd like to change things up. I think 
also um, having cancer this year and going through all the treatment and and that whole process, you know, I'm very grateful that I'm in remission right now, but it really kind of like stirred me up too. It's like, you know, you don't have time to sit on your ass and do the same thing all the time. You need to change things up, get things moving, start turning things around. And I think it's given me like some new ambition to look at things in a different way, start trying new things, looking at new ways to be. So I just have to point out one quick thing before I end this. These little little marks right here. This is my absolute favorite part of this sculpture. The leather I use is very thin. So what these, I mean, to me, this kind of looks like veins. What that is, it's actually marks from the plastic underneath that I cover the, the clay and plastic so that the leather doesn't stick when I, as it dries. And that's how thin this leather is that you can actually see the little marks underneath. I think that's very cool. I like that a lot. And I think it makes it, it just gives it a little more dimension. And that's always been something that I try. I mean, that's not something I necessarily have control over because as the leather dries, it kind of does its own thing. But that's just one of the things I just love about leather. I never know what I'm going to get in the end. And it's always a surprise. And I like that. I like to be surprised. I don't like to... I always have a plan, but I never quite know where I'm going to end up, and I enjoy that. I always enjoy being surprised. So anyway, until next time, that was my latest three-dimensional leather sculpture, and hopefully you'll come back, because I'm going to keep doing more of these, because these are fun. I'm having a blast. <laughs>